Hello, this week we are stitching a little hoop with brick and cross stitch and this template is for a four inch hoop. I'm going to use this lovely purple. Um, I hope you can see how nice that is on there. It's like a lovely aubergine colour. It's called Prince. If you want to um, have a hoop, a hand painted hoop from my shop, um, they're available on there. So I'm just going to use some washi tape to stick this down to a flat surface and I'm going to be stitching on this lovely pink linen. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see the pattern through there. It is there, I can see it. <laughs> um, and I'm going to use an air erasable pen to do this. Um, I'm trying to put the lid on again. How many times have I done this? You'd think I'd learned by now that the lid doesn't stay on. Anyway, um, so brick and cross, I'm just going to quickly trace this pattern. Um, if you've watched my uh, YouTube tutorial already, um, you'll see me doing it freehand. And in that, I said I was going to try and um, draw it on instead. And I really think this is the way forward. <laughs> there are some you can get away with doing freehand. Um, I don't think this is one of them. Um, you know, having done it a little bit more and I recorded my IGTV video as well and I drew it on in that video and it's so much easier. Um, I know it might seem like a bit of a faff drawing it out with all of these lines. Um, but the air erasable pens are pretty forgiving. Um, they do disappear quite quickly sometimes, so you might need to just um, draw out little sections and then continue. I'm doing it all here um, for the video because um, it's Thursday and I need to get this up for tomorrow, <laughs> which will be today by the time you're reading it, Friday. Reading? Watching? Oh, I don't know what's going on anymore. Never mind. Um, so yeah, so I'm just doing it all now, but you might want to just um, draw on a smaller section. Oops, I mean, I'm trying to put the pen on the wrong end, put the lid back on. Uh, it's going well, isn't it? <laughs> Please bear with me. Right, I'm just going to put this um, fabric in the hoop now, that design's all done. I've left the selvage on here. Um, you know, I am always keen to kind of avoid as much waste as possible and when I do trim it at the end, which I will do on this video, I'm going to show you how I back my hoops because um, I realised I haven't done that for a little while. So for anybody that's new to this, I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, yeah, just leave the selvage on. It'll get chopped off. It means that you can get more out of your fabric and that's always a good thing. So I'm just going to tighten that up in there. Um, just give the fabric a little pull. Make sure that the fabric is nice and flat, but not stretched. It needs to be tight, but not too tight. Um, you'll get what I mean when you when you um, put your fabric in. So I'm going to use this lovely purple thread. I didn't quite have an exact colour match for this um, shade that I've got on the hoop, but actually I think I'm happy with the brightness. So yeah, I'm going to go with it. <laughs> it's what I had painted. Um, and yes, so I'm actually stitching this in my studio. I've got my thread wall behind me, which if you haven't seen it on Instagram, go and have a little look. I've got a load of shelves with all of my cones on there and it's just making everything so much quicker because everything's accessible. And obviously it's quite Instagrammable as well. So I'm sure it'll be featuring on my grid a bit more. So these brick and cross stitches. Okay, so I've got the first cross in and I've got the first brick in. When you get to the second brick, you just need to make sure that the um, top stitch in the cross is going over in the same direction. So it actually doesn't matter which direction you stitch it in, but I went over the top on the first one coming from this side and I'm going to do the same again. And it might feel a bit pernickety, but I think it does actually improve the overall effect of it just because it makes it a little bit neater. If you forget the odd time, honestly, it won't matter. No one's looking that closely. And if they are and they're judging you on one cross being the wrong way around, then that says more about them than it does about you and your stitching. So don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, just if you, it's something to bear in mind, but if you forget, don't worry. So you can see how quickly I'm stitching this up. And I've, um, this template is available on my blog. Brog? Well, I mean, Come on, sorry, excuse me today. It's on my blog and it's free to download. And um, yeah, what I'm gonna do uh, for newsletter subscribers is I'm gonna have it available in slightly different sizes as a template, a standard one that you can use for lots of different sizes. So this is quite big. It's much bigger than um, what I stitched on um, 
IGTV and on the other YouTube tutorial. I think it's just about the size of hoop you've got, the space that you want to cover, because it is it covers very quickly, as you can see. That's just me stitching in real time there. Um, you know, so have an experiment with different sizes. Also, I'm just using one colour here, which isn't hugely exciting, I know. I'm actually really, really pleased with the overall effect of the hoop. But you could be much more adventurous with colour. Okay, so if you wanted, you could... Um, you know, have the bricks all in one colour and the crosses in a different colour, or you could do like a set of four in one colour, so two bricks and two crosses in one colour, and then change it up for the next section. You could even do um, like an ombre effect down the three lines of the bricks or something. Um, so yeah, there we go. That's my finished one in all in one colour. Even the back has a pretty pattern. Um, but you could be much more adventurous with it if you want to. I'm going to leave that entirely up to you. Just have a play around. Look at the materials you've got and see. So I'm going to trim the back just to show you how I finish the back. Um, and I'm going to follow kind of the line along there. But I've just remembered that I haven't actually tightened the screw. Always make sure first step is to tighten the screw. Now, if you've got a screwdriver handy, which I do here, amazingly, um, a screwdriver is a really good tool for this point because, as you can see, I can just get it a bit more tight and secure there. What you've got to do is check that that top bit where the gap is in the hoop that there isn't any kind of bunching of the fabric there. So if you have gone too tight and you're not quite happy with the, um, the tension of the fabric there, just undo it a tiny bit and give it a pull. And then I find if you pull on that top bit where my left thumb is, you can give it another tighten there. And just make sure that you're happy with the overall look before you trim the fabric. Okay, because once you've done that, it's harder to move it. So, just by eye, I'm just going to trim around here. Based on kind of that sort of narrowest edge, I'm just going to use that. If, if I put the fabric more in the middle, I would have had a bit more to play with, but there you go. I didn't. doesn't matter. Nobody knows. <laughs> um, so, yeah, trim that. Just move that away to one side um, and remove any bits of cotton that have fallen off. Now, the way that I finish the back is that I use some number eight pearl thread. This is DMC shade 602, which should look very nice with my fabric. I quite like to match it with the fabric, but you could just have white as standard and you know that would be absolutely fine. So just thread the needle here. Oh, here we go. Something about threading a needle on camera, isn't there? <laughs> when I was a music teacher, it was like that, like when you do exams and stuff, if you told the students that you were recording, it never went as well as if you didn't tell them. It's weird, isn't it? It's so bizarre. Anyway, just something in our brains that happens, I think. Right, so tie a knot in the end. I've tied three on that, so you get a nice big knot at the end, but leave the excess. Normally I say trim it, but for this bit you need to leave it because you'll need to pull it at the end, so you'll see what I mean shortly. Basically what you're going to do now is stitch a running stitch along the back. Okay, so um, this is just a really simple way to pull it all together. And I love to leave the backs open. If we covered up that back, we wouldn't be able to see that beautiful pattern, would we? Um, and that's not to say you have to show everybody the back of your stitching. You don't. <laughs> okay, nobody really sees the back. You can have a look at the back. You don't have to show anyone else if you don't want to. Um, but I like to leave it open. I think it's really, really nice to see all the work that's gone into doing it. So as you move around and you pull the thread, you'll see that that's gathering together really nicely. That's what we want it to do. And do you know, I find, for some reason, I find doing this bit really hard on camera. I think it's just a tripod that I've got. It kind of clips onto the side of the table. And in some of the other ones, I've kind of knocked it and it feels like we're sort of in some sort of earthquake going on. But um, I find it really awkward. So sorry if I look like I'd be really awkward on this. I'm just trying not to knock the tripod and I can never decide which way to move my arms but um so yeah if your hand goes a bit too close to the camera apologies for that it's because I'm trying not to knock it okay so we're basically at the top and it's all come together really nicely all the way around now so try and get your last stitch bring your needle back up close to the where your first one started and now you'll see why we didn't trim the end it's because we're going to pull that pull it nice and tight and then basically 
tie a knot in the end. Now I leave my needle on to do that because I find that that's quite helpful but you can take it off if you want. You could also trim um, the thread because I've got quite a lot of thread here. I obviously added way too much on. Don't worry it will get used up for something, there's no waste. Um, so yeah just give that a pull there and then tie it and then you might want to just do one extra one just to be really sure. There we go. That's it. And now we are going to trim the ends. Ta-da! It's ready to hang. You could hang a ribbon in the top if you want or just leave it like that. But that's our lovely brick and cross stitch hoop.